Hey everyone, this is David with Android Police, and we're here at CES 2017 checking out the latest from ASUS. Now, you probably have already heard about the Zenfone AR because, well, it did leak a little bit earlier this week, but it's almost certainly the most virtual and augmented reality capable smartphone ever released. It combines Google's Tango AR and Daydream Ready specifications to create an industry first device, and it really is the first to combine both. The specifications are nothing to sneeze at either. A Snapdragon 821, a 5.7-inch WQHD AMOLED display, 8 gigs of RAM, which ASUS claims is an industry first, a 23-megapixel rear camera, and Android 7.0 combined for a powerful handset running a respectably recent version of Android, though we'd prefer to see 7.1. Your first question, though, probably given all of the uh, Zenfone AR's major VR and AR capabilities, is how big is the battery? After all, VR and AR are notorious for their intense power usage, so this is a pretty critical figure to have. Unfortunately, ASUS wasn't sharing that information today, but I can tell you a few things about the Zenfone AR based on my brief time with it here at the show. First, this thing is nowhere near as awkward to handle as Lenovo's Ginormous Fab 2 Pro, and that's a huge relief because that phone was way too big. Zenfone AR feels like any other 5.7-inch smartphone. Granted, it does have a physical home button, and it doesn't feel especially nice, either. You've got your capacitive navigation keys, the fingerprint scanner and the home key, and otherwise normal phone layout. ASUS's Zen UI layer is still here, and heavy as ever, but it is now based on Android 7.0, which it well should be, given the Zenfone AR doesn't launch for at least three months. The software on the demo units we tested was very buggy, but you know, that's kind of to be expected, and there's probably still a lot of work that ASUS has to do here before the Zenfone AR is ready for release. Go to the back of the phone, though, and things are a little different. You can immediately tell this is a Tango phone. The massive camera and sensor array is a dead giveaway, much as it was on Lenovo's Fab2 Pro. Much to our sadness, ASUS wasn't actually letting us try out the Tango experience, though, saying the software wasn't ready yet. ASUS did demo two new Tango experiences on stage with Gap and Hot Wheels, but if I'm honest, neither seemed like they were the sort of thing that would bring Tango into more mainstream relevance. The Snapdragon 821 processor is the same one you'll find in the Google Pixel phones, and the performance of Google's Daydream VR experience on those phones is any indicator. You can probably expect the Zenfone AR will get quite toasty and use a lot of power when dropping you into the virtual world. Overall, the Zenfone AR seems like a perfectly respectable high-end smartphone, and that's good for a Tango-enabled phone because the Fab2 Pro wasn't. But we just don't know quite enough about it yet, namely pricing and battery capacity, to really issue a verdict just yet. Tango doesn't seem ready as a reason in and of itself to buy a phone, but the Zenfone AR feels more like a normal smartphone than an AR one-off, which may bode well for sales. Given AR is in the name, however, it seems like SUS is probably betting on its reality augmenting prowess to move units, and I just don't see anything today that makes Google's Tango AR a killer feature, at least not yet. Zenfone AR is expected to be available in Q2 of this year, and hopefully we'll learn more about it in the coming weeks and months.